That is just what we needed for oh. a Monday morning. Perfect. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Anderton's TV. And my very special guest today is Lari Basilio. I hope I pronounced that right. Yes, my Portuguese correct. isn't great, um, but it's great to have you over. Um, Thanks so much for having me. I'm super happy to finally meet the captain. Well, we, we, I must admit, I, I started watching your YouTube channel two or three years ago and we invited you on and I'm just super pleased that you had an excuse to come to England. And I'm also, you are officially the artist I am most jealous of uh, because of the musicians you got to work with on your last album, which we will get to soon. But so take us back then. I mean, I've read on your bio, born in Brazil. Yeah. Um, Sao Paulo. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell us about growing up there and, and you know, was it a musical family? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, my, my father is a musician. I mean, he loves to play, play the guitar, he writes songs, and he actually taught me my first chords on acoustic guitar. But before that, uh, as my parents were always very supportive regarding music, uh, when I was four, around four years old, I already had a teacher at home to teach me organ. Wow. So that was my first instrument. Just from four as well. Yes, yes. Crazy. So, yeah. So I uh, kept studying organ like for a long time, um, a long time, like, so many years, and uh, it gave me like a great like background uh, on the theory and everything. And then later, my father taught me my first chords, and I fell in love with the guitar and. I kept, uh, I started like studying more. Yeah, what, what sort of style was he playing? Uh, I mean, we have some particular particular styles in Brazil, yeah. of music in Brazil, so it was a very particular particular one. And I mean, he, he always played more the acoustic guitar. Yeah. So. But Latin, typical Latin music. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, what sort of access did you have to listen to, you know, perhaps more contemporary guitar players uh yeah it, it was it was it was easy okay. i mean yeah i have i had some great influences i mean the guitar heroes i mean of every, of my generation are like the same joe satriani stevie Vai, yeah. and timmons paul gilbert so I, I i grew up listening to these guys so uh that was, uh, with them, what was my first contact with instrumental music and everything. Yeah. I mean, you, you've obviously gone down uh, as a guitar player the path of, of um, being that sort of instrumental, virtuoso style guitar player. When, back when you were learning in your mm -hmm. teens, mm -hmm. were you in like a conventional rock and roll band with a singer? And, or, so t tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I had a band in my teens. Uh, actually... <laughs> Uh, at the same time, I was uh, in law school. In law school? Yeah, because I... I yeah, you're going to get a proper school. job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My dad is a lawyer. Right. As well. So he he is a huge influence for me in music. And mm -hmm. he influenced me in that as well. And at the same time, I was in law school. I had a band. was was not so much like a... <laughs> Uh, it was like a hardcore band. Okay. <laughs> so we were playing like uh, in the underground scene mm -hmm. of Brazil. So it, it was a very fun time of well, life. Like hardcore metal and punk <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Oh, yes, cool. Yeah. Cool. Like Doing very different. Original material? Or? Yeah, we, we recorded just an album. Okay. Yeah, we had a great we time. Should, we should try and find that album <laughs> somewhere on YouTube. What was the band's name? Uh, Little Joe. Little Joe. Yeah. Well, there you go. You can go and find that. Post some links in the description below. Um, so what point when you were, at what point during your teens did you begin to feel I could do this for a career? Especially if you're doing law as well, because that's yeah. a great career yeah. as well. Yeah. Must have been a, was it a difficult choice to sort of, 
you know, go, no, I think I want to be a guitar player? I always knew that I wanted to be a musician. Okay. And uh, sometimes in Brazil, music can be difficult. And maybe that's uh, the reason I started, like, doing the law thing. Yeah. Uh, but at some point, I would... I, 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 I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I always doing, like, both things. Uh, I went to law school and I kept doing my music with my band and my own stuff as well. I, I was always writing my own songs and I had this dream to putting my uh, original work out. Mm -hmm. And at some point I had to choose because music was really happening. Mm -hmm. And for me it was super easy because, you know, music is my life. So And I guess... <laughs> I can imagine some people's parents would be really sad, you know, really disappointed to, to, to stop doing a law uh, degree and do music. But yeah. I guess your dad understood, right? Yeah, definitely. So he no loves, problems. He loves it as much as, as do you, I do. Do so. you think, could you fall back on being a lawyer if you needed to? I think I could. Well, there you I go. Think I think, yeah. You got, that's perfect. Um, well, look, so, so you're... you're you, you decided during, whilst you were a teenager that you wanted to be a professional guitar player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mentioned before that learning to play keyboard when you were younger gave you a really good theory mm -hmm. kind of grounding mm -hmm. in music. Mm -hmm. Did you go to a did you did you go to a, a college or a, you know for for music or is everything about your guitar largely self taught? It was mostly private teachers mm -hmm. in my hometown. Uh, when I moved to the guitar, I studied a lot. For some years, I studied like by myself at mm -hmm. home, and then I got some private teachers in my hometown, and it was basically that. And what what was it about what was it about you know Steve Vai and Satriani, and you mentioned Andy Timmons mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. l lots of killer great guitar players, mm -hmm. but what was it about their style as opposed to maybe some of the more typical you know singer songwriters you know that. What was it about that style of music that inspired you? I don't know. I always loved so much instrumental music. And mm -hmm. it always happened so naturally for me. Especially when I, um, when I, when I noticed I was already like writing my own songs. And I don't know, it's, it, it just moves something inside me differently. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these guys like are a huge influence to me. I mean, that you stylistically, I think if you, to, to do instrumental music well, you've got to be able to combine, you know, an interesting melody line, but with the nice kind of chords as well mm -hmm. in between, which you, that opening piece is a, is a great example of how you do that. Um, was that, how do you sort of, were you actively looking for tuition to help you do that? Or, or you know, are you just able to hear you know, hear what you want to play and then it's just a question of finding it. Yeah, I, I spent so many times like playing by ear mm. after my dad taught me my first chords. I, I had to figure mm. most of the things like by myself. So uh, it was great because it, it really um, helped me to, to, to practice like my ear thing. So um, I think, I mean, the theory is very important, but most of the time I... I need to, uh, I want to be a uh, lead, led, mm -hmm. sorry, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I want I'm... to be like, I want, I, I prefer like to feel what I'm feeling, uh, then, I mean, think, theory, like directly. I see. So, so yeah, like the, the, the notes kind of come from the heart and then the head exactly. has to work exactly. out <laughs> what to, I yeah, know, I know yeah. what you mean. It's all about the feeling, I, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, and. I don't know, sort of stylistically, you've probably built, certainly the, the newer album, the, the first, I shall hold up some <laughs> albums here. So, this album. The first EP, yeah. 2013. 2012. Right? 2012. Yeah. Um, I feel terribly, am I allowed to ask how old you were when this album came out? Um, I, always... I was, today, um... <laughs> let, let me count. <laughs> Because I'm lost in, in this count. Quintus and Twenty-one, yeah. Right, okay. So, pretty young to bring out a 
first album I guess and did you did you just record and produce everything on here yourself or yeah I had a producer with me okay uh, like a very well producer in Brazil and what was the reaction to, to this oh album? That, that was great I mean in my country it was very well received the EP by I think it was a great way to introduce myself like yeah for the first time to the audience to the public it was great and was this when other guitar brands started to first, you know, realize you as a guitar player and get in touch and ask to work Definitely, with you and yeah. stuff like that? So is this around about the same time you started your YouTube channel? Or was that, yes, yeah, exactly. It was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so this is cool. This, the reason I, I think I was, where I was going with this, this is quite a bit heavier, this album, than, yeah, a bit. than uh, the, the most recent uh -huh. one. Mm -hmm. So I was just gonna kind of talk about, you, you know, what, what were the, what is it about maybe turning down the distortion a little bit and letting it sort of be a bit more open and a bit cleaner that, that you know, what influenced, uh -huh. you know, how, how the, the new album sounds? I love that the, the albums, like, we always reflect, like, the phase that mm -hmm. I'm living mm -hmm. and it's going to be, like, there forever. <laughs> yes. I love it. Uh, but I think there, uh, all my albums has, like, a, a point in common that I, I would say that is the versatility because mm -hmm. I love to play like different styles. And I think the, the first one is a little bit heavier, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I like to play different styles and I, I try to keep it until today in this album. I, I still have like, some rock songs yeah. and everything, but I think it's an in interesting point in yeah. common of the, all my albums for sure. So. Let's talk about now your kind of, so you, I guess you, you know, you've been full time playing the guitar now for, for six or seven years. Yeah. Um, what's that been like, you know, just as a, what have been the, the, the challenges for you, you know, trying to get gigs, make a living? I mean, it's so tough to support yourself on yeah. a, mm -hmm. you know, on a guitar player's income. <laughs> So what have you have you done other stuff like have you done you know tuition obviously you know gear demos kind of your own YouTube channel yeah um, and I'm trying to think what kind of advice would you give to people who similarly are perhaps thinking you know I need to do this full time but I need to earn enough money to live yeah. as well yeah yeah I mean it's been for me it's been a dream mm -hmm. come true to be to be honest I mean I'm super happy to be able to live. Uh, as a musician, like full time, uh, a lot of challenges for sure. Since I since the beginning, it was it was not easy. I mean, m most of the people might be uh, getting to know me just now, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a long journey so far. Sure. Uh, but it's been fun. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things that we can do. Um, I did I did a lot of gigs in Brazil, like with different artists, like mm -hmm. a side man. Yeah. You know, side Side yeah. girl, yeah. maybe. Side person, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, I did a lot of tour uh, with different artists there. Uh, I also, uh, to, um, to today, I do a lot of sessions. I record a lot of stuff for many artists yeah. around the world. So uh, what else? Guitar clinics, year demos for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I have my YouTube channel. I, I do a lot of this stuff, so yeah. It seems so important to me nowadays. I, I know very, very few musicians mm -hmm. who only write music and mm -hmm. play gigs. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, and those people tend to be the ones that are having the big hits. You know, yeah. And everybody else is is going, yeah. I'm gigging. I'm doing sessions. Mm -hmm. I'm demoing gear. I'm doing teaching. You know, it's like, and it seems, it seems like you have to just be open. Definitely. To yeah, I have some lessons any... as well. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. It's, it's very important. Yeah. We, we need to be open like to do another stuff and be creative yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Presumably, presumably with your background, you do all your own contracts and everything, do you? So yeah. You, you're, you're probably the one musician that we can talk about that's never signed a bad contract ever. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good... Uh, that, that was a good thing that the law thing brought me like for sure. I can use this in my career for sure <laughs> so obviously this is far more is your fourth album 
Uh, I had this first EP, and then the the sound of my room is a live DVD and full album. So, full album for Mar is the second. Right. Um, when did you start? I mean, I should say if you if you've not uh, listened to this, you should go listen to this album. Especially go and watch the YouTube videos about it. I'll I'll let you tell everybody who the band is on this album because it's just like and how and and how do you even begin to approach that kind of a project? Um, since I moved to LA, I moved to LA in two thousand seventeen. I started like thinking about my new album, writing the songs, and think about the whole project. But things were happening very naturally. And at the end, it was like far more than I imagined. That's why the <laughs> right. album has the name. It's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, in LA, it's all about connections and uh, everyone knows each other. So I had a great friend of mine producing this album with me, uh, my friend Rodrigo Rios. He's also Brazilian. Yeah. And I mean, everything happened so beautifully. I mean, it's just a dream come true Do to you- have this all this wonderful people together. Do, do you make the phone calls? Uh, we haven't even <laughs> said, right, so Vinnie Colorito yeah. on drums. Yes. Nathan East on bass. Yes. Greg Fellingaines on keys. Exactly. And a bunch of others. I forget the lady's name, a phenomenal singer. Saida Garrett, special yeah. guest. Yeah. On uh, one of the tracks. I mean, it's like, do you, hi, is that is that Vinnie Colorito? <laughs> do you, or does the producer handle all that? Um, he helped me a lot with that. With Vinny, it was funny. We were like Instagram friends. Mm-hmm. So he knew me from Instagram. That and helps. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah, the my friend Rodrigo helped me to uh, be can't. in contact with the other guys. And also, I mean, they're friends. Yeah. Which helps a lot yeah. as well. I mean, to have their, the, them all together there. And they were having so much fun to be oh, playing together. You can together. tell in yeah. the video there. But how bad were your butterflies do you know what you're like in your I know. Yeah. how how bad was that of the morning of the first session first song was was a little bit <laughs> like difficult because <laughs> these but, guys have played with everyone yeah right exactly but they they made me feel very comfortable they're they're phenomenal they're amazing people they just wonderful it's it's it was just a joyful day i right. would never forget for sure and i can't are all the tracks were they done in that one day yeah yeah. Some insane day then, insane. right? Insane. I mean, they read the charts and listened to my demo like right before we start tracking, recording the songs and just one two takes and done. That's when you know <laughs> you've got the top A team band, <laughs> exactly. doesn't it? It's just like, yeah, quick read through, okay, go. <laughs> and there's what, like eight, nine songs? Yeah. Nine songs yeah, in a day. Phenomenal. They're that just is amazing. Mad. And you're playing, presumably, you must have been nailing it all as well, because you didn't have time to redo everything if you've done nine songs in a day. Yeah, yeah. I, I add a lot of guitar later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, you know, guitar players, we like guitar I, stuff. I know what you yeah, mean. So, yeah. I add, I add a bunch of things, like, later. But that day at Capitol, would, I, we were just, like, trying to focus and, getting, and get everything done with the band Mm -hmm. and they nailed it they did (laughs) how can you tour an album like that because i mean presumably you can't afford to have vinnie colorita and nathan east and greg fillingaines on the tour so whichever band you get in it's like no pressure you just have to play drums like vinnie and you have to play bass like Nathan. yeah can you are you are you gonna tour yeah yeah i yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be fun it is I'm, i'm figuring out (laughs) <laughs> how it's gonna be but yeah i'll be touring oh that's um, that'll be amazing i'm gathering some dates now and i can't wait i can't wait to like hit the road because i spent so many time like producing and yeah. working on this project so i just want to play now <laughs> i bet you do well it's it's as i said it's it's a fantastic album oh and of course we shouldn't forget with Jose Trioni on one of the oh, tracks yeah, as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just mean, minor. Just Jose. We, just, we had the best drummer and the bass player in the world, but we thought we'd get like the killer crazy guitar player as well. I mean, such an honor. Yeah. Jose Trioni is a legend. And he is such a huge inspiration to my generation and for many generations to come for sure. Mm-hmm. And I mean, 
he killed it. It's Joe Satriani. I mean, I don't have so much to say. Yeah, but you did um, you did guitar experience with him? Yeah, didn't you? yeah. That's when I first met him, actually. That person. must be another. Again, we talk about butterflies in your. <laughs> that must be another level, isn't it? So, totally. who was on the guitar experience tour uh, with you? Kiko Larrero, mm -hmm. uh, Bumblefoot. Well, uh, they were some special guests. Neil Sean, Rick Nielsen. Wow. It was it was a really great experience indeed. It was phenomenal. It was great. Do you think you'll do another one of those? Ah, I would love that. I would love to do for sure. Good for you. Good for you. Well, look, we should talk about um, gear wise. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued. You're, you're here in the UK as a sort of special guest of Laney Amplification, which is great. And thank you very much to Laney for organizing today. Um, and I was quite surprised, not by the, the choice of Laney, but just I always kind of saw you as someone that would probably be using, you know, an Axe FX or a Kemper or a Helix or someone just because of, I don't know, a lot of that big ambient tones, mm -hmm. guitar players have gone down that route, especially yeah. guitar players that have to travel a lot have gone down that route. Yeah. So what have you always been, you know, into having amps on stage and in the room with you? Or have you kind of had a journey into the digital thing and come back to it? I just love like real amps and the feeling of playing with real amps. It's amazing. That's why I choose Lenny. Um, it's been great like to it's a big great opportunity to like to be working with Lenny this fantastic amps and I mean the Lionheart is one of my favorites and I just love this amazing clean tone I mean my tone uh, the starting point to get to my tone is to have a great clean tone mm -hmm. and I feel that I can get it from the Lionheart yeah and I mean I also like use some plugins some digital stuff as well right. but uh, for me, like the real tube amp is like, there's nothing like, like it. And so. is that, is that, um, do you like just having the amp in the room as opposed, because I, you know, I don't like the sound of guitar through mm -hmm. headphones. I mm -hmm. find it impossible to really get inspired. Uh -huh. um, so I'm much, much happier like this. But, you know, when you're in a recording environment, presumably it's quite, challenging you know sometimes you just have to to, yeah. to go through headphones but are you, so are you you know would you always um ask the producer to set you up so that you're in the same room as the as the guitar yeah amp? when it's possible i always like to mm. hear me through the amp mm -hmm. and when i have to use earphones i sometimes i use just one side to, to, yeah. to keep you from the amp yeah. the other side but yeah for me it's great like it's to feel the the this warm sound mm. coming from the because it's not you don't you don't really sort of crank the thing crazy. You've got a, quite a nice open dynamic. Yeah, everybody sound. says to me that I don't play too loud, and I and I don't really. <laughs> you must be you're, you're like a you're like every gig's dream, aren't you? Just like you know, finally a guitar player that doesn't have everything on eleven. Um, and are all your so your gain sounds are coming from pedals typically? Yes. Are they? Yeah. Could we just have a quick kind yeah, of like, because sure. um, again, it didn't, apart from maybe the track with uh, Joe Satriani on it, there wasn't mm -hmm. anything like sort of really high gain. It was all quite sort of clean or just sort of broken, clean uh -huh. sounds. It, I really like it. I really like that sound, uh -huh. but yeah, I'm interested how you get those kind of tones. Yeah, here basically my main overdrive in this pedal board uh, is the Morning Glory by JHS. Is, Great pedal. Yeah, it's one quite of my quite Marshall-y kind of vibe, yes, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. And I used it a lot in yeah. this album as yeah. well. Uh, what else? We have the Koji Comp by Sir. Uh, also by Sir, I have the Overdrive and Distortion Eclipse mm -hmm. and Alexa Chorus, which is awesome. It's beautiful. And what else? Delay, the delay, it's... I love this delay. It's a, from a Brazilian brand called GNI. Mm -hmm. It's always on my pedal board, so it's wow. super easy to dial. You got to support in. the Brazilian <laughs> pedal economy, yeah. absolutely. And the MXR reverb. So you're the you're using the, the just the pedal reverb, or are you layering kind of amp reverb? There's and, a little bit on the amp yes, as well. <laughs> we love it. This is yeah. like double reverb. Every, yeah. I, I I can't uh, I actually can't even play the guitar if there's no reverb. I just I don't yeah. know what's happened. It's like I get yeah. stuck in the mud. I love like reverb and delay for me. It's I always have to 
Absolutely. And the chorus as well. I mean, it's just, it is a beautiful, can we, can we just hear like a couple sure. of those like sort of very typical Lari kind of tones? Yeah, I just love this chorus, it's awesome. Yeah, and, it, and it, like you say, it's not loud. It doesn't uh -huh. have to, I mean, it's a big amplifier. Yeah. But it's there's a, there's something, isn't there, about it's not volume. It's just it's just just that big sound, isn't it? I love it. I mean, yeah, I love how this this Lenny like sits. Yeah. In the room. Yeah. I just love it. And are you are you generally a fan of guitars that are stylistically sort of stratty or telecaster or have you got a big collection of guitars at home? And... I love so many guitars. I think my favorite it might be a telecaster. The right. Telecaster, yeah. I think it, it suits me well for my style. Yeah. But I I mean, I love Strad and Les Paul. I'm a big fan of Les Paul. Are you? Yeah. I'm not sure. But have I ever seen you playing with a Les Paul? I don't know if I have. I, I think... use it a lot in my new album. So right. Yeah. So, I love it. And it's interesting because we always say about Telecasters, I think, I, I think for guitar players, the Telecaster is, if you can get good sounds out of a Telecaster, you are... That's when you know you're kind of up there because it's, it's like there's nothing. It's like the guitar is there's no tremolo, there's only yeah, three no. positions, there's yeah. no humbuckers, mm -hmm. and so I I kind of think all the best guitar players gravitate towards a Telecaster because yeah. it's just if I don't know why, but it I think it's the, I think it's the one of the hardest but also the greatest mm -hmm. guitars that there is. Yeah, I love it. I yeah. just love it, and I find I find for for me nowadays like very versatile. Yeah, and I. I just love it. I think you get it just forces you to 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 really get everything you can out of how exactly. you pick and the you know yeah. what this left hand's doing. For sure. So so tell us about then what you hope the future holds for you. I mean where where do you even go? Like how do you put the next band together? You know or... That's a good question. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> but I mean I I hope to keep doing my music and playing around. I'm just I just feel blessed like to have made this incredible album with this not not because of me or my music but well, it's your it. album <laughs> it's your album they're, your, they're pretty much all your songs so but, yeah with this incredible people so I'm I feel just blessed and I hope to continue like making my music for many years like my heroes yeah do so yeah that's my dream well Fingers crossed. I hope your dreams come true. <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thanks Everybody, so much for I will me. put uh, links in the description below where you can go and find Lari's uh, website. But if you do nothing else today, go and listen to Far More. It's such a great album. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you very much. Thank you so much Please. for having me. Yes, no problem at all. And uh, anyway, thank you guys. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. See you. We'll do that. That is such a good guitar. Oh, uh, now. Try it just for like a minute. <laughs> This will this will break this the internet. Okay. This is Pete <laughs> Telly and with you playing it, it'll be great. Okay. This is so beautiful. Gosh, there's such oh, a there's such a great sight. story behind that as well. Um, oh. how much is it? <laughs> <laughs>
noticed before, do you never play with a pick? Uh, I do. You both. Do. I do both. But that, because some of the little rakes that you were doing, just those little intricate kind of triplet rakes, uh-huh. it just adds another level to it. It's really nice. Glad you liked it. Yeah. yeah. I do both. I do okay. pick in. <laughs> Ah, oh, well. Love it. Oh, of course, you've got the matching <laughs> nail varnish and the lipstick and everything. It was almost like this was made to be. It's a lucky colour, for sure. It's a lucky colour. Oh, you always it feels know. so good. This is the pro- You can never put it down. Though. Fantastic way to spend the morning. We could listen to you all day. It's great. See you guys. Yeah. Run, quick run. He'll never catch you. All right.